Simon Bungle. Hope you're doing well and I hope you're having a great day today. We're going over and listening to the World War II free to play first person shooter. Much requested. Let's talk about, hey Bungle, talk about the Tiger E and the Invasion of Normandy campaign. Now, what we're going to do here on my channel, if you're a new viewer, possibly a new subscriber, well, I'm going to give you an overview. I'm kind of telling you, you know, what are we reviewing today. They actually talk about the performance. Is it good? Is it bad? And lastly, is it worth it? So without further ado, let's begin. One of the other things I like to do here, kind of give you some historical authenticity or some kind of little snippets here. And I got this book from uh, Ollie's Bargain Market. And one of the things here in this, this book, as you can see right here, we're gonna go right into it, with the Tiger. Now, the Tiger is a heavy tank that was produced by Hensel based on a 1941 design and entered production in August of 1942. A total of 1,350 were built before production ceased in August of 1944 and the type was replaced by the King Tiger. There were three main variants, a command tank, a recovery vehicle fitted with a winch, and the Sturm Tiger, which was fitted with a rocket launcher. The Tiger was an excellent tank, but complicated and therefore difficult to produce in large numbers to maintain. The overlapping wheel suspension had a tendency to clog with mud and stones, if it froze in cold conditions, such as during the Russian winter, it could immobilize the vehicle. It first saw action against the British in Tunisia in 1942, and therefore appeared on all fronts. So, starting off with an overview. In the Invasion of Normandy campaign, as you get higher and in the campaign levels, this is a high-end reward vehicle. This is a Panther III class. This is also can be equipped in the Panther A slot. For whatever reason, which I found out through kind of testing, is that the level two tanker class currently only holds the Panzer IV H. You can't replace it with any other tank. The tanker three class, however, has a Panther A and the Tiger, so you're going to have to make the choice. Do you want the Tiger or the Panther? Now, moving down to its performance. Well, what does the Tiger really bring to the table, right? Well, of course, it's its famous 88 millimeter cannon. Now, the performance of the cannon, honestly, compared to the Panther, is literally the same. It will nuke any tank if hands frontally, but if you ask questions about, well, what about that jumbo? No, it performs the same exact way as a 75 millimeter gun does, where you need to aim for the machine gun port on the jumbo to penetrate it, as well as try to aim even at the transmission to immobilize that jumbo and then aim for that machine gun port. Now, when we talk about every other tank, it will one-shot it very, very easily. But moving down to, you know, its other armament, you have a coaxial machine gun and a turret machine gun you can use as well. And for defense purposes from, you know, infantry trying to swarm you and stuff. I want to give a shout out to the, one of my viewers, RKC, for actually testing with me on how the Tiger performs, especially with this capability as against being, being penetrated. Uh, as you can see here, this is a view of a Firefly basically aiming at a Tiger. You can see here that you can penetrate it frontally, no problems. Uh, we also tested the Jumbo, seeing how the Jumbo performs against the Tiger. The Jumbo really can't do anything against the Tiger. You have to aim for the machine gun port on, on the uh, Jumbo, and you'll be able to take it out. You can shoot a transmission tube to immobilize it. But, you know, talking about is this tank invulnerable, is it better than the Panther A? Well, I'm going to say not really because the 76 millimeter cannon, and this is the gun that's on the premium Firefly, as well as the high tier reward for the Allies, the 76 Sherman, can actually penetrate the Tiger. It can penetrate it frontally, it can penetrate the turret. The Tiger is not invulnerable, and it's also prone to getting destroyed by American close air support, such as eight cars. So the tank is not really, you know, an upgrade, I would say. It's just another addition to the Panther, and in some aspects is actually kind of weaker. One, the Tiger is a very big profile tank. Two, mobility-wise, it's more mobile than I say a Panther, especially in reversing. But at the same time, however, when we compare its armor capabilities, if you know that the Panther is actually sloped, you know, moving down to here, is it worth it? And kind of one of the things I like to say is that the Panther is a better tank. The thing with the Panther is that it has sloped frontal armor. Sure, it's slow and reversing. Sure, the gun on the Panther is a 75 millimeter cannon, but when we talk about survivability, the Panther has higher survivability than I would argue the Tiger. The Tiger is a really big blocky tank. The gun on it is very good. But when it comes to its armor, especially its turret, as well as its frontal armor, it's really weak, especially against a Firefly or a 76 Sherman. If an enemy team has those tanks, you're going to be, you know, not invulnerable, not invincible, especially if they have HFARs or close air support. 
If they have closed air support capabilities, you're done. Like that Tiger is gone, especially if it's a P47, the high end one with HMR rockets. But that's my two cents on the Tiger. You gotta keep in mind, you have to make a choice with the Tanker 3 class. Do you want the Panther A or do you want the Tiger? For whatever reason, in a list it's mine, and they probably need to go and update this, is that the Tanker 2 class only has a Panther 4H and that's it. Personally, they should move the Panther down to the level two tanker class, so that way you can take the Panther out in addition to taking out the Tiger. Well, that's my two thoughts. Let me know what you think down below. Other than that, I hope you all have a great day. Take care.